Welcome to this instructional video from OSS on the step-by-step -step performance of the total petroleum hydrocarbon test method that can be used as a guide while performing the initial tests. Before we begin the process, let's review the equipment you will be using. On the left, there are two 10 milliliter glass syringes with plungers, a 5 milliliter glass syringe, a 3 milliliter glass syringe with customized needle, a 60 milliliter glass syringe, and an OSS syringe holder. On the right, we have an OSS Polar NICE column, two end caps, and an OSS clear shot extractor. Next, we have on the left a 50 milliliter glass jar with PTFE lined lid, and on the right, a drying manifold with pressure regulator. So now let's get started on the detailed method review. Like all oil and water test methods, the first step is to acidify the sample to a pH of 2 using hydrochloric acid. We recommend HCl as other acids may interfere with testing accuracy. Once a pH of 2 has been achieved, the sample is then homogenized first by shaking for 20 minutes using a laboratory shaker. This is followed by sonication in a sonic water bath at a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Times may vary depending on the level of material in a sample, and a more exact time and combination can be determined with your specific sample system. Now it is time to extract more than 8 milliliters from the homogenized sample using the 10 milliliter glass syringe. Ensure that there are no trapped air bubbles in the bottom of the syringe, and then adjust the volume to 8 milliliters. Once there are 8 milliliters in the syringe, seal the open end using the syringe end cap. The next step is to position the syringe in a holder and then remove the plunger. Add two milliliters of N-hexane into the syringe. The solvent will remain on top in a separate layer. Then we reinsert the plunger into the syringe. The next step is to place and secure the syringe into the syringe holder using the two Velcro straps. The solvent will extract all the oils from the sample while on the shaker for 20 minutes. Remove the syringe holder from the shaker and ensure that all air bubbles are eliminated from the lure region or metal end. Then let stand for 30 minutes to enable the solvent to separate from the water portion. We are now ready to extract the water from the system. First remove the syringe from the syringe holder and then take off the end cap. With the syringe in a near vertical position, push out the water until there is about one milliliter of water left in the syringe. Now invert the syringe so that the water portion, which is the heavier component, is at the bottom of the syringe near the plunger tip. We are now going to remove the water from the sample by using the glass syringe with the custom tip. Insert the tip directly into the water and slowly extract the water until it is no longer present in the sample. At this point, we are ready to separate the polar portion from the total oil in the system using the OSS NICE column. First, we attach this column to the syringe holding the sample, which we will refer to as syringe A. Next, we attach an empty syringe, which we will refer to as syringe B, to the other end of the column. Push the sample through the column from syringe A 
to syringe B. Then reverse the flow by pushing the sample from syringe B to syringe A. Once more, push the sample through the column from syringe A back to syringe B. Pull on syringe B plunger to ensure that all of the liquid has passed through the NICE column. Then disconnect syringe A and deposit the sample from syringe B into a graduated 50 milliliter glass jar. This final pass through the NICE column ensures that all of the polar material from the sample has now been trapped in the column, and all that now remains in the solvent is the nonpolar portion of the total oil and grease. Next, we will disconnect the syringe to push air through the column. Pushing the air through the column will ensure that all of the nonpolar material and solvent is removed from within the column and is ready for further processing. Now we will want to ensure that all parts exposed to the sample are flushed with 1.5 milliliters of solvent. This includes the two syringes that can be washed together in series and the two plungers. Using the small amount of hexane to remove any residual material ensures that all of the components have been collected. This increases the accuracy and precision of the test method to a higher degree. The addition of the 1.5 milliliters of N-hexane brings the total amount of solvent used in the method to only 3.5 milliliters. This total volume is dramatically lower than the standard solvent-based extraction methods. All of the solvent will then be flushed through the column. Once completed, you have now separated the polar and nonpolar portions. The nonpolar portion and solvent are now ready to process. At this point, we will evaporate the solvent from the 50 milliliter jar using oil-free dry air for 10 minutes. The volume controller setting should be 250 milliliters per hour and should not create a splashing of the N-hexane in the glass jar. The sample is ready for the next step as soon as the solvent has evaporated and all that remains is the oil portion. Next, we are going to add 400 microliters of acetone to the jar and swirl it around. This will prepare the oil for testing in the clear shot extractor. At this time, add approximately 50 milliliters of deionized water to the jar. Attach the lid and then shake the sample. Afterwards, remove the lid. Then place the jar into a sonic water bath at 40 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. The objective here is to evaporate the acetone from the sample. Using the 60 milliliter syringe, 
Remove the plunger from the syringe and then cap the bottom of the syringe using the end cap. Next, shake the sample and then pour the entire sample contents into the syringe. Flush the jar with a small amount of deionized water. Shake the sample jar and then add that liquid into the syringe. Replace the plunger into the syringe. Then invert the syringe to ensure that the excess air has been removed. Next, attach the clear shot extractor to the end of the syringe. Push the entire volume into the clear shot extractor by hand or using a syringe pump. Next, place the clear shot extractor on the TOG air manifold to dry the extractor. Once dry, follow the instructions to measure TPH in water using the software provided. This concludes our detailed step-by-step -step method review of the TPH test method. For any questions or additional information, please contact us through our website at ossmain.com.